Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Erica with Fibers and Floss Canada. If you stumbled across my channel, this is a channel all about cross stitch and whatever sort of crafts I'm up to at the moment. Um, and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for returning. It means a lot to me. I don't have a lot of time today. Our children are off on spring break summer break. You see what a mess my brain is? Everyone's home and everything's upside down. Life is a circus and I just thought it's been three weeks since a regular floss tube and things are starting to pile up so I better just quickly get in an episode, do a quick film um, and take that kind of off my plate so I can you know, get on to whatever stitching I feel like doing at this time. So I thought we'll just dive right in. Um, I always start with my book of days and I think that this will really, so I guess it was end of, let me look here. It's really been about three weeks since I've done a regular floss tube video. Um, this here is my June and I actually did, I'm surprised I, I did complete the month. Well, maybe not fully complete but most of the month is done but if you want to get an idea of summertime three kids at home and i'm working a lot of extra hours right now this is how much time i have for this i literally have done nothing i haven't had time to get stickers in or record anything that i have done um, and today is the 12th of july uh, so i guess i'll release this on the 13th but i've had no time for any of this which is unfortunate and now even today trying to put stuff together i don't know what i've done on what day so um that's my book of days just shown to illustrate how busy life can actually be and that's okay because Really, this is, you know, this is a hobby and we need to keep this fun and light and not overwhelming or cause of anxiety, right? So, um, moving right along, <laughs> I was doing a stitch along with Rogue Mama Stitcher and Allie, the, the cross stitch files. Um, I'll link them beside here too. I can't even speak. Um... Anyways, I was doing a stitch along. It's called Frazzled Frog Cell, and I have finished it. I'm excited to show you because this is actually an FFO for me. Um, you know, I do get things, I finish stitching, but I have a, seem to have a hard time actually completing them into a fully finished object. So, um, you know, with this frog, I had decided that I likely will just end up, you know, framing it and then um, almost like a framing it with fabric, like a quilt block, and then making it into a small notions bag. But when I started doing that, it just didn't look quite right. So I'll show you my FFO here. Um, it's a rainbow bag, and I'm actually super, super impressed with this. So um, the cross stitch in the middle there, that's a frog. It says, I have no idea what the hap is fucking. And you know, when I had seen Amber share this, I thought, I, I need to stitch this because I feel like my life has been very busy and the last six months I have a hard time um, kind of keeping things straight and organized in my mind and it you know it's not the typical style I stitch but it's something very fun and colorful and I thought yep yeah, I'll stitch that so we did <laughs> um, it was a fun easy stitch I stitched them on 18 count black Ada using the call for DMC floss and then um, the, for the project bag I just used scrap um, fabric that I had at home and then I had some of this lovely white stripes and I just did the same on the back and then the top is like a double um, Lori Holt zipper which her zippers are fabulous you can zip from the left or the right and inside is some tulip pink rainbow um, fabric so I'm super happy with that it's a 14 by 15 so a bit of a larger bag um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with this project bag. I think it will be lovely. Now I just need to decide what's gonna go in there. If you're interested in stitching this frog, um, you can join them at any time. The stitch long is open um, and I recommend it. It was a fast, easy stitch. It was my car stitch while the kids were in school. I was able to, you know, stitch while I was waiting for them for pick up and drop off, etc. So um, next thing I need to go over was 
three weeks ago in my last video, um, I do whip that wheel and I do that in a method to help me work through some of my whips and kind of create a bit of a focal, po focal piece for the next two weeks. And I had spun it and I had just finished explaining, you know, my whole problem with Elizabeth Furness and, um, you know, where to go from there. So if you missed that, this is a pattern um, by Hands Across the Sea, Elizabeth Furness, 19, or 1836, sorry. Um, and I wanted to stitch it on 56 count, and which I've never done before. So I thought that I would go ahead and order that fabric. And then I had also heard that, um, you know, the DMC conversions for Hands Across the Sea are fantastic. And, you know, don't hold out, don't wait for the, you know, the silk, just go ahead and get the DMC see so I ordered that but you know my right brain didn't talk to my left brain and I never stopped to think that DMC is going to be way too thick for this 56 count so um it all arrived I took a look at it I wasn't sure what was going to happen um you know is it going to be thick enough or not and I did stitch a little bit and I went um you can't see it on here but along the very border is bright red edge and so I did stitch across the top and back with DMC on the 56 count and it was good. Um, it surprisingly was okay, but when you get down to this area that's full coverage, I think you're gonna run into some big problems. So um, I elected to hold off and wait and save up for the, um, the Averisois 103s. And while I was waiting, a incredibly generous viewer um, had reached out to me and sent me a gift card for the amount of the 103s, um, which is, it's unbelievable actually, the generosity that, you know, we see in the stitching community. And, um, you know, just that someone would reach out with such a generous gift was just, uh, it made me breathless. It, I just, I don't even know what to say. I mean, obviously I said thank you and I'm working on a little thank you to send them as well. Um, but uh, very, very um, grateful for that. Uh, it's very, you know, humbling really to receive such a gift. Um, and then, yeah, so then, you know, I thought, okay, well I can, that's great. I'm gonna order the 103s. Um, but there isn't a 103 conversion for this. I mean, it's funny whenever I do something, it's never, you know, um, it's never easy. I never just go, okay, this is the pattern and let's just stitch it as, as it's called for. I mean, sometimes I do, but quite often in life, pretty much anything else I do other than cross stitches, uh, you know, I like something, but I need to make some changes before, you know, I dive into it. And why should Elizabeth Furness be any different? So um, there is a conversion for, it. Called, the pattern itself is old. I think it's actually the first or one of the very first um, patterns ever released by Hands Across the Sea. And it does call for the, um, the Avera Soie, the Dolge, Soie Dolge. Um, and there, see I'm not overly fluent in the silk language yet, because I really don't stitch with silks. It's something that I'm hoping to get into. Um, and this is the first one that I'll be stitching in the 103s. So there is the um, Averisois, the Delger, and then there's a conversion for DMC, but nothing for the 103s. So um, I reached out to uh, quite a few people actually. So huge thanks to Audrey, to Lucy, to Nicola, to the ladies at the attic. Um, and between all of them, we worked really hard in getting this conversion um, set up. A huge, huge special thanks to Lucy, who is another stitcher in the States. Um, she spent so much of her time, she's stitching this as well with the called for silk. And um, she's also growing her 103 collection. So she took the time to go through and pull all of her silks and then check 
back which 103s look well look good with them laid them together laid out the whole thing and sent me tons of photos of this as well as noting all the numbers for them um, and she's stitching Elizabeth Furness as well so also sending pictures of what you know the colors look like in real life and I just huge huge thank you for that I mean that is um, that's a huge amount of time I know I spent hours on this so far as well so I, I thank you so so very much for that conversion um, all this to say that um, I have gone ahead I have received the hundred and threes most of them I'll put pictures while I'm talking most of the conversion that we have done has worked out really really well um, there are essentially three colors that I would like to change in there that I'm not quite happy with um, but that being said, I'm working on finalizing that. So I've uh, a couple of viewers have reached out to me as well, wishing to stitch this together. Um, this week I've been uh, speaking with Barry of Stitch Folk. She has this all kitted up as well, and we're gonna start stitching on September the first. I know there was um, two other stitchers that have reached out on Instagram, also wanting to stitch it. So September first will be our our go date. Um, if anybody else wants to kit this up and start this uh, you know definitely reach out to us that would be wonderful and if anybody wants to stitch us in the hundred and threes and wants the list of where I'm at my conversion let me know I'm happy to send it to you guys so um, all of that just to say that on whip that wheel I didn't end up starting Elizabeth Furness. I still had too much conversion sort of groundwork to do. Um, and so my second option in the meantime was to start my uh, Maple Leaf Montage. I'm not as organized as I usually am. I usually have everything ironed on boards ready to go and that is not the case today. So please bear with me. So what I ended up doing was I did start this Maple Leaf Montage and this was by um, Lynn Nicar Nicarelli. I did this last time, didn't I? Lynn Nicoletti. Nicoletti. And it's actually really, really fun stitch. Um, I did a video about Canada Day on July the 1st. I'll put a link in here for you if you want more information about this pattern. Um, and I also talk a lot about Canadian designers as well. So this one here I have started. Um, I also have learned that the sit City Stitcher, it's just City Stitcher, not the, uh, from Calgary, Alberta. She's just finished this actually and shared that on her floss tube and it was wonderful to see. I'll show you where I'm at on mine. I've got a little board but nothing is pinned or ironed. Um, I am stitching this with a called for DMC on Weeks Dye Works on 40 count putty. And this is where I'm at so far. So I've done um, four different designs. I'm almost done this panel. There's like a petroglyph here, and then there's a little, um, I think it is a numbers referring to an airplane here, something like that. I can't, I can't recall off the top of my head. So um, once I've done that, which only comes down to about here, this red panel is finished and then I can move on to the center. But I'm actually gonna stick this, pop this stitch away, um, and then I'll take it out in preparation for Canada Day next year. I did actually really enjoy doing this. This is a out of print pattern, but you can find it on the secondary market. And actually a couple other stitchers have talked about this since Canada Day, and they were able to find this one as well as a few other of Lynn's patterns. She's done the blue nose, um, which is the sailboat on our dime, as well as a couple other patterns. Okay, so then I wanted to show you this. This is a project bag that I had made. I don't think I had shown it to you guys yet. So I had um, stitched this with the Tilda Hibernation line that I had purchased previously. And this is the back. I just thought it was a really cute little bag. It's stitched up super quick. Um, I followed a tutorial from Elizabeth Ankin Stitch and I had um, no complications using it. The inside of the bag is just lined with the same as the, the top bit here. Um, super easy tutorial. The only thing is maybe the size is a little bit on the smaller side, um, but that's okay. You can definitely fit probably a, a, 
11 by uh, 11 by 9 sort of pattern in here easy to change those dimensions though if you wanted to for yourself um okay the next thing i worked on was my year of the dragon um stitch along with samantha the huga stitcher now i have to say at this point when i was working i felt like i've been all over the map nothing's been working particularly well for me in the sense where i haven't really felt overly motiva motivated to work on my projects i really didn't to be honest really didn't feel like working on uh, my celestial dragon but i felt like i needed to because of our um videos that we're filming on the 10th of every month and so i took it out and I started stitching on it and I've left this in the frame because I need to fix it. And almost everything I've done, I've had to take out and frog. And so it was a sign I needed to just put it away and step away from it for a little bit. But as you can, you might be able to see it here. So I worked on completing the border up in here and then I was coming down this way. And what had happened was, um, it's really hard to tell, but when you look at Teresa Wensler pattern, she uses a lot of blends and essentially the darker yellow that's all along here and there is the wrong color. Um, I think what I ended up doing was maybe I, instead of pulling one of each color for the blend, I think I pulled two from the same color and it's much more orange than everywhere else. And you can kind of see I've done the exact same mistake down here. See how this one's a little bit yellower? Can you see that? And so that stitch that comes down there and it comes up the side here as well. And so I have to take it out. But the problem is, is that in this stitch, everything, all of these are stitched over top of each other. There's a ton of quarter stitches, um, three quarter stitches. And I just don't know that uh, I tried frogging some of it and it was not working. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is actually just take one strand of the color that I'm missing and just stitch over top of what I've done with the one strand. And as long as it's not looking too bulky, I think that's what I'll end up doing just to kind of tone that color down. Um, yeah, and it also comes like, I can see in person here, it comes all the way here and down here, there, there. Everything I was doing, I thought, this isn't working. So I just set that aside and I've decided to take a bit of a break from that. Um, and Samantha and I, we did go ahead and we did film. Um, and we actually didn't end up talking much about the dragons because she's feeling the same way in terms of motivation for that, that piece. So um, it's in a timeout and I'm gonna revisit it when I feel motivated to work on it, which really hopefully should only be a couple of weeks because I'd like to you know keep up the pace and get that done by the end of the year. Okay, so my next um, project I worked on was a small, so, um, which I, you know, I really need to do more smalls. I, a lot of my projects are quite large and in depth and I I get a little envious, env envious watching some of the floss tubers doing their smalls and all their finishes because that's not something that um, I get to do often and I think it's, I don't know why, but I should stitch more smalls. So there is a um, Canada only swap that is happening um, this, I guess this fall, end of summer, um, and it's hosted by the Stitching Owl and the Two Bay Stitchers. And I think registration for the event is closed at this time, so I won't give any more details, um, but it has to be a, a Canadian design and it has to be the overall finished project less than six inches. So I have chosen to stitch a couple things. Um, I went to Erin Elizabeth Designs and I downloaded her Canadian tier. I'll put a picture here and also her Canada Smalls, and or Canadian Smalls, sorry. And so what I'm doing is I am stitching this one here on a 32 count Lugana, but I can't remember, I'll put um, the color on the side because I can't remember off the top of my head. It was just from my um, scrap material and I'm stitching it one over one. So it's super tiny, like here are my fingers and it's really, really small. 
And so I, I have the bottom part of the tier almost complete. I just have to come to the side a little bit more. And a little bit of the bunting on the one side. Oh, there you go. And I've done the, um, the world's smallest jar of maple syrup, another leaf, and I'm working on the loon there. So this will be a really fun little piece, and then I'm going to end up putting it in um, probably the front, like quilted into the front of a Notions bag, and I plan to add the other pieces from Canada Smalls in there as well, if I can get the time to finish that. Um, as I'm stitching it with the Call for DMC, and so far it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Um, okay. So at this point in the month, I was feeling quite overwhelmed. I have quite a few stitch alongs. I have a round robin project. I have a secret um, project, which is quite a bit of work Sam and I are working on. Um, you know, we have our monthly videos Sam and I are filming and I was just feeling a little bit, lacking motivation, not motivation, lacking creativity. And I felt like everything I wanted to work on uh, wasn't really bringing me that joy. Um, and I felt like I had this huge, like almost like a looming list in my mind of stuff I should be working on and things I should be completing before I could really get into what I want to work on, which was Christmas in July. Um, I did pull out some Christmas in July and I started stitching it and I just wasn't feeling it. And I I was talking with Samantha and she was feeling largely the same way and so we just uh, I think after that conversation just giving myself the permission to say you know it's okay if we're behind on this stuff and it's okay if we you know choose to not um, meet our goals I mean why do we have goals in in something that is our creative outlet really I mean a goal is okay, but I have a lot of goals, too many goals that is now causing me some stress and I don't want to say anxiety, but it just is taking the joy out of my hobby. And so um, I said, you know what, forget it. I'm going to forget everything that I need to do this week. I'm going to put it all in the back burner and I'm just going to do what I want to do. And that was really some Christmas in July stitching. Um, and so, you know, I, I felt rejuvenated. I felt like, oh, I've got some stuff I want to work on it. I want to address Christmas in July. I want to address my lavender and lace um, angel of spring. And I want to, you know, do some sewing. And so I just kind of stuck everything aside. And I, that's what I've been doing the last week is really kind of whatever I want to do, anything other than what I need to be doing for my cross stitch <laughs> and it's been feeling really good so i'm going to share with you some exciting stuff that i've really enjoyed doing and i hope that you guys enjoy seeing it so lavender and lace angel let's talk about her now three weeks ago i did a video and we talked about her and what i should do this is a project samantha and i um, stitched i was 14 years old she was 15 years old i went to the stitchy store you know i bought the craziest most beautiful uh, most difficult pattern they probably had at the store at the time and thought i know nothing but I'm gonna dive in and do it. And and I did, and we had a great time. It provided us many, many hours of stitching time together. Um, lots of great memories, lots of late nights, some all-nighters. And then it just wasn't my style. I got, you know, stuck in a box. And then when I did pull it out and thought maybe I'll finish it, I was horrified to see the discoloration that had happened over 29 years you guys like am I old enough to have something that's 29 years old I guess I am <laughs> um, and so you know we I, I looked at that and I thought oh I was heartbroken the yellow had the white had all yellowed um, and so I wasn't sure you know do I throw it out do I try and frog it do I tr what do I do and so thank you guys for so much um, encouragement and comments and just what to do and how you know people would try to approach this themselves um, I honestly was at the point of thinking maybe I should just cut my losses and get rid of it and in hindsight now thinking about it that's crazy 
right? There's so many special memories that have been, you know, woven into this piece of um, stitching. And although it's not my style anymore, um, I have to finish it, you know? There were some comments on there from some stitchers that were just so wise. And really, it's not about the piece. It's about the memories that are, you know, stitched into that piece and the time that we have spent together and what that signif um, what that, uh, what that means to us, you know, it, it just, that you're right, I have to finish it. So I'll put pictures in here while I'm talking. This piece was edged by masking tape because 30 years ago, that's what we all did. And um, I ended up serging the, well, I shouldn't say serge. I don't own a serger, but I stitched the edges. And then I cut it. I gave it quite a vigorous uh, rinse, maybe a little too vigorous for needlepoint or um, cross stitch, but that was okay. I ended up actually... When I felt motivated to do it, I didn't have any Dawn dish soap and I thought, you know what, it's so kind of beyond that, I think, that I just went with some regular laundry soap and some OxyClean, which wasn't really my original plan, but it worked well. The dishwater was shockingly filthy. I couldn't believe how dirty the water was. Um, I washed it three times. I rinsed it and let it soak three times and then another stitcher had suggested to put it in the sun to dry and that the actual sunlight does work in um, bringing some of the colors back to where they're supposed to be almost like a natural way of bleaching stuff and so I thought sure no problem so I put it out on the deck um, and it has turned out really really well the edges of the fabric are a bit of a mess I think because of my um, Washing was a bit aggressive maybe, but let me just show you. Again, it's not ironed, although it looks good because it was just washed um, or pinned on the board, but this is where it is, where I'm at. Look how white that white is. I mean, the pink is pinker, the blue is bluer. Everything looks so much better. Look at that. And so you can still see there is still some like discoloration here and in the top wing up here. But all in all, it is so much better than it was. On Instagram, I showed some pictures of comparisons, and so I'll likely pop that in here as well. So what I'm planning on doing is um, every summer we end up going to the cabin with my girlfriend, her family cabin, and I always bring a project to finish and a project to start. And I think Angel of Spring is going to be my project to finish. And I think it's incredibly fitting um, because, you know, this is something I have only ever really stitched in, in Samantha's presence. And I think it would be amazing to be able to sit down and finish that with her. So um, we'll see, there's not a ton left to do on her. So hopefully um, I, I really want to try and stay in an area where I'm enjoying my stitching right now. So if I start working on her and I'm just not feeling it while I'm there, then I'll tuck it away. Not for 29 more years. I'll definitely finish it quicker. But, um, you know, she's going to be one that I plan on pulling out in August and getting at least two to three weeks of solid work on her. So I should be able to wrap her up, I think, which would be amazing. So that um, project it felt really good to wash it and, you know, kind of know what direction I'm heading in with that. Um, the next project that I worked on was something that I had purchased uh, maybe a couple of years ago. And it's a bit of like a English paper piecing project that um, I, I got from Chitter Chatter, my local quilt shop, and I can't remember and nor can I find now the pattern, but I, I'll see if I can find it before I, I put this up here. And um, so you guys can maybe do it too if you want, but it is a bowl. So it's English paper piecing, which if you don't know, um, essentially 
I, I'm new to this too, so I don't know the whole history on it, but it's where you're taking little pieces of fabric and you're sewing them together. There's many different ways to sew them, but I'm sewing mine with a whip stitch. Um, and then instead of, you know, back in the olden days when they would do this, they would use like newspaper would go in behind the pieces and that would be their form that they would cut their fabric out. And, um, and then they would actually leave the newspaper in their quilts um, and it would just stay in there I guess as an extra form of like insulation I suppose but this one because it's a bowl there is a foam um, backing that I've used instead of like a cardboard piece of paper and so this is the inside of the bowl and then the outside of the bowl is right here so it's kind of a different stage but you can see um, I have just basically I would fold it down and I would whip stitch along here. Tons of little tiny stitches, like there's probably in that inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, there's probably 30 stitches that goes along there. Um, so I've done that with all of that, and then now I need to put the sides together and stitch the sides together. And then when that's done, then I can take this, I can take my bowl and I can fold up the edges and then I can just stitch along the top here. And so it will end up being like a lined bowl that would look kind of like that. So um, it's been fun. It's just a different project, something, you know, a bit more creative for me to dapple in. And I've really enjoyed doing that. Now, before I have a new start, I wanted to do a giveaway winner. So um, last time I filmed, I had a um, a giveaway. Thank you to Mama Bear dot stitching stitching. Yes, Mama Bear dot stitching on Instagram. Um, I met her in person. She came over for a stitchy night, and she had these little canvas bags, and in them are the Mill Hill um, that I loved uh, collection. And this one here is called, I love, is it crafting? I love stitching. Look at that. So it's got scissors. It has a scissor charm that hangs from there. The key word in this video for that was love. Um, I used the random YouTube random comment picker and I'll put it on the screen here. It's Sophia DeYoung, De DeJang, um, 4878. So if that's you, reach out to me on Gmail. I'll link it in the box below and I'll be able to get that giveaway out to you. Um, the other thing I should mention while we're here is that, um, no, I'm not going to mention it yet. Not yet. I'm all over the map. You see, I've been working more and long hours, but I've shifted my sh shift so it's early. I work 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. And, you know, I do two days in a row and then my brain is totally fried I just I need some time afterwards and I feel like my brain isn't fully recovering yet from those early shifts so um bear with me I have a new start now this is Christmas in July stitching um for this one here I am stitching uh Mirabilia's holiday queen no mm. I'll put it on the screen because it's not in front of me right now. A royal holiday, a royal holiday, a hol a Christmas queen is what it's called. Um, and so I'm stitching it on the called for fabric, which I think was a 32 count chestnut by Wichilt using the called for um, floss. What I have done is um, not too much actually this is one that I had started and it wasn't bringing me joy so I just popped it away for a bit but this is where I'm at on her I haven't done a lot um, when I had started it though I thought oh I'm getting into if I went this way into her lap all those darn yellows and whites again again yellows and whites I don't know what it is what's with that but so what I've done was just this little bit here and then some of this ribbon there. I really wanted to get into the red and so I probably will go back into that. I've just been doing some sewing the last couple days instead of stitching. So um, yeah, so far I'm happy with it. It's stitching up well and I'm always, I always forget how stiff that witch chilt is, you know, until you 
pull it out and you start stitching on it and it just doesn't uh, just doesn't flop around very easily which is okay um, the next thing I've been stitching for Christmas in July is a whip of mine that I'm trying to finish. So I started this in December of last year, and I'd like to finish it in July of this year. And this is um, Donner, and this is uh, by Nora Corbett. So this is part of her Christmas Eve Courier Collection. This is one that the Hugo Stitcher is doing one pattern every year. And I think, Sam, you must be close to finishing it, right? I think you might only have two or three left, and then when you're done, I have no idea what you're gonna do for Christmas stitching. But I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I was talking with Rebecca from Beck Stitches Everything, and she said, oh, you, you're flying along that. And I said, oh, no, I, in December, I stitched on it for six days and I did the reindeer. Well, I looked at it, and that's not right. I actually, this is where I'm at, this reindeer, this part with the just the like the DMC stitching of the antlers I did in December and it took me three days and then um, what I've done now is the border is complete all the stitching is complete actually and I'm just starting to add all the jewels and there's so many so I've done this corner is complete I've done the antlers and I'm moving here then there's tons and really big red treasures in the wreath there's some more through here and then lots on the bottom again. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. Almost all the beads in this are Magnifica beads by Mill Hill, which just adds to the fun of like, can you find those beads? Maybe. Most stores don't have them. <laughs> There's some number eight beads in there too. Can you see how much larger those are? And then of course some of those treasures. So this has been fun. I've actually um, spent about an hour and a bit beating today. And yeah, I will definitely complete this one before the end of July for sure, um, which will be great. Now, what else do I have? I have so much haul too to show you guys, it's crazy. Maybe I will do that next. Just looking here. Yes, okay, let's start with that. So. Um, for Elizabeth Furness, I told you guys I got all those silks came in the mail. Thank you to the um, generous viewer that had uh, gifted those to me, which is an unbelievable gift, to be honest. I, I can't even, that's so much, right? Um, and then the fabric I ended up getting, I don't have it on me. Hmm, <laughs> I'll put it in the, um, in the video here. So this is the 56 count fabric. I wasn't happy with the Kingston fabric. It had like these brown slubs in it. And so I end up calling the attic and I said, just send me something that's gonna work with that pattern. And this is what they sent me. And so it's funny, the color of this and the color of the um, Cafe Ole Kingston that I had previously ordered from 123, the color is almost exactly the same. This one is maybe just a slight bit pinker. It doesn't even look pink at all, but when you put this on the Cafe Ole Kingston, it is, oh, which is right here. It is slightly pinker. You see that? This is a bit more yellow. I mean, in real life, I can, I can barely see a difference. On camera, there's quite a significant difference. So um, yeah, I've got all that, excited to start that project. Now I have, I placed an order with Embroidery Marketplace because I really wanted to get this book, you guys. Look at this book, oh my goodness. This is um, all sorts of motifs and it is, I wonder if I can flip through backwards here for you guys. It is an amazing book. I'd like to try some designing and that's why I've ordered this, but look at that. So that is something where I think this summer I could get into maybe playing around with some software um, and seeing what I can come up with. I feel motivated for that, which doesn't work into any of my cross stitch goals, but that's okay. Um, then I had ordered this from Etsy. 
something, you know, Christmas for me, and I was thinking Christmas in July, um, it's all very like, I like Christmas stitching, I like kit stitching. Um, it's all kind of that nostalgic, older patterns, you know, that I had in my house when I was a kid. Um, and th for some reason, that's what I'm drawn to. And so I ordered this kit off um, eBay and it's a Santa with his polar bears. Look at that. I don't know, it's kind of tacky, but I love it. I think, you know, I probably would change his staff there to, you know, something a bit more golden. Um, and I did pull it out. It was something where when I was feeling a bit unsatisfied and not um, finding really any joy in what I was stitching, I thought I'll pull it out and start stitching this. But I've ordered different fabric because it comes with 14 count navy Ada. And it's concerning because they do, it can, came with the MC Floss and they wanted you to use two strands on 14 count Navy Ada. And I thought, there's no way you're gonna totally, there's so much white in, a, oh, I just popped it back, but there's so much white in there. You're gonna see through that for sure. So I end up ordering, I think a 36 count um, picture this plus that has a bit of a, I was going for something kind of a bit more opalescent, which I didn't end up finding. Um, but it has a bit, I think it's called Gothic. It has that like purple and navy kind of, you know, sky look to it. And so I think that might go really well with it. We'll see. And then of course I would do two strands and then you're not going to see through it at all. It's going to look great. Um, and then a local lady, I picked this up for my girlfriend, Samantha, because on, um, Facebook marketplace, Joan Elliott, this lady was selling this package for, it's a full kit for 20 bucks. Um, and this is called the ice. Oh, I can't read it now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, ice fairy. And I picked that up for her and it's gorgeous. Look at, there's all these little bunnies at the bottom. And there's lots of beads in here, lots of sparkle. The kit comes with the um, eight o'clock, which Sam will probably change. And then all that floss, specialty floss, and the beads. And for 20 bucks, or maybe it was $25, I can't remember now. I think she, I think I paid her $20 for it, I think if I remember correctly. I mean, that's an awesome awesome price for all of that. So that's a little bit of my haul. Um, then I have a little bit more stitchy kindness. So um, I didn't ask if I could say this lady's name, so I'm not going to say her name. But I had shared that I want to stitch Earth Dancer by um, Butternut Road. And she had actually quite a few people had reached out and said, oh, I have that pattern or I have that, you know, pattern and partial kit, etc." cetera. Um, and this lady reached out and she said, you know, instead of taking it out, I'm gonna put a picture in here for you because I've taken a picture of what I've got so far. Um, she said, I purchased this. It came as a estate sale. She stitches almost exclusively samplers. She will never stitch this. It's just not her style. Um, would you like the pattern and the fabric, all the beads and all the specialty flosses? Um, and that she would just send that to me from the States. And I again amazing so i've sent her a thank you um and i just again blown away by the generosity in this community um and so i'm working on doing a few things that i can kind of contribute back into our community here too so you guys will hear about that uh, as soon as i'm able to get that all set up a little bit more haul when i did one two three stitch i ordered turkey day so um I'm sure you guys all know Turkey Day. I just wanted to have this because this fall I don't have a lot of stitching. I finished a lot of my um, sort of fall autumn stitching. And so I ordered this one here. I just love the bright red in his face. I think it's really, really cool. Um, the variegated flosses I purchased as well. The specialty ones, I just threw them in at the same time. And um, now I've purchased a couple different fabric options. So. This one here is um, 40 Count Mallow by, hmm, 
It actually doesn't say who this one is by for some reason. You know, it usually says on the green label, but it doesn't. Eighth yard, 40 count mallow. Anyways, so there's that one, a bit more of a neutral, or I ordered some Weeks um, 40 count straw, which is very different. But when I look at the Turkey Day, um, you know, I, I like the straw. I ordered the mallow for a backup just in case I didn't like the straw, but I think that the, like, the most of it, even the leaves will pop on that straw there. I just have to lay out the, this color might not pop that well, but I think the turkey would look really good on it. So I have some options for that. And then I have one last thing I want to share, and this is very, very special. Um, when Cardamon Pins went to Amsterdam, she went to a shop. I don't even want to say the name of the shop because I'm just going to butcher it. And she says things so perfectly, of course, right? Um, nope, I'm going to put it on the screen for you. <laughs> She had, um, I really want to stitch a modern folk embroidery um, piece. I have a biscornio on the go, but I want to stitch a piece. And um, I've looked at his website quite a few times. There's, you know, there's a few that I keep looking at back and forth. Um, but there hasn't been one that is, you know, where I think, oh, yeah, I, I have to stitch that. Um, there's ones I like, but nothing that is just 100% I, I need to stitch it. But when Cardamom Pins went to the shop in um, the Netherlands, she posted a picture of this exclusive that you could only buy from the shop. Um, and it's a sampler from Drenthe. And it's this one here. And so I've ordered it and it's arrived in the mail. I was so happy to receive this. Um, I absolutely love it. Look at the moss there. You have with the lettering up top, the big ship in the middle, you have a couple vases, some flags. I think it'll be a really, really fun stitch. Um, you know, to be honest, I haven't even looked at, oh, it's even not that big. It's 193 by 30, 137, which is excellent. And I've ordered a 40 count um, Ada that goes with it. Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I wonder if I can show this here without, and it has a Swat LJ there too. Can you see that there? So yeah, I'm excited to start that one. Um, I'm not sure when I will start that though. I may save that for this fall. Um, it also came with a little, um, you know, I don't know what you call these things. You put them on your little, it's like a decoration, you know, for your, scissor fob or your bag or whatever so um not sure when i'm gonna start that i'll see i think Car carmen's gonna stitch it as well so i might reach out to her and see when her when she plans on starting it um but i think it'll be a fun one for sure and then i'm dying to get back to dutch beauty so a couple dutch samplers and when i was looking at jeanette douglas actually i really like her dutch sampler and i thought i no stop I can't, I have too much on the go, but the next Dutch one I buy is gonna be Jeanette, or yeah, Jeanette Douglas's, cause it's beautiful. Now, um, just a couple other things to talk about. Floss Tuversity, it's out for summer. I'm not gonna do any until my kids are back in school because I just don't have enough time, um, quiet time and the mindset to really get into doing like a tutorial at ease. So um, I will start that up again in September. Uh, so whip that wheel I'm not going to do right now because I'm trying to get that creativity back and um, just really enjoying the stitching that I'm doing at this time. I feel like I already have that looming list that I'm going to kind of tick a few things off um, slowly and so I want to kind of alleviate that pressure and I don't feel like I need to get creative in what choice I'm going to be doing right now because I want to be stitching um, Christmas in July. Um, also, I want to say that I guess the last thing is, well, a couple things, who I'm watching. So I'm watching all my usuals, of course. Um, 
you know, so many great floss tubers out there, right? And I feel like, you know, sometimes I don't get caught up with people and then I watch two or three weeks worth of videos and, and I'm caught up again, right? And I cycle through all my usuals. Um, but there are a few people I wanted to mention. So Carl Kirsch, she's in Germany and she's absolutely amazing. I Something about her where she just seems so um, grounded and down to, down to earth, you know, a lot of her stuff she's doing, she does conversions for she seems like she's very um she's very creative as well she's not just a crafter but like she's creative she makes a lot of changes she dyes her own yarn for her knitting um and she's currently stitching the witchy stitchers um tarot cards and she's done conversions from the pinks to blues um yeah and she's participating in a couple cells and doing some christmas stitching for july so really enjoyed her i'm gonna link a few of these well i'm gonna tell you about five people that are newer or rarely put out videos and i'll link them for you guys and the second one is sally stitches and dot 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 so she's new to me um the reason why i tuned into her is because her um thumbnail for youtube had this beautiful rainbow quilt and you know me in anything rainbow so she is a cross stitcher and she's doing some halloween stitching right now um but what grabbed my attention was this beautiful rainbow um alice in glass quilt of course Alice in Glass is queen of you know rainbow and quilting um, and it was with her wildflower line and she did a beautiful quilt with that so she talks about largely all of her cross stitch first and then she talks about her quilting and her challenges with quilting her setup in her house her quilting space um, how she'd like to get more into quilting but she kind of shows us the area that she works in and how she works um, on each quilt so that was a fun one to watch um, City Stitcher from Calgary. She was new for me too. The reason why I watched her, she came recommended to me because she had finished Maple Leaf Montage. So I tuned into her um, and she had some wonderful projects as well. And she did a, an, a special episode um, for Canada Day at the same time as me. So it was nice to actually watch a different um, Canada Day special and just seeing some of the stuff she had featured and her patriotic wall she's talking about about building um, very very fun then Sarcy girl okay you guys she's amazing and she took quite a break from floss tube it's been a long time since I've seen one of her videos and so she was back on there made a video for us this month and I thoroughly enjoyed it it was so great to see what she's been up to of course she's a Canadian designer as well um, just some lovely stitching and you know i'm always interested in seeing what the designers are up to in their free time you know are they working on something where are they at in their design process um what are designers stitching right so that was a good one and then the last one you guys probably all have heard of her by now and this is periwinkle stitcher she's from the uk um she reminds me a lot of nicola parkman for some reason maybe it's just accents i don't know um but again she's a very you know prolific crafter she not only cross stitches but she does a lot of fine embroidery she does quilting sewing you name it and I find her channel is really interesting so I've watched her videos as well can't wait for the new one um, and I thought you know her, on a personal note she's fun she's got these two young girls and they went to go see I say young they're in their 20s they're in university was it Foo Fighters? They went to go see some like rock band and, and she tagged along with them. I thought, that's great. I don't know that my mom would come to that with me. <laughs> I thought it was very cool. So definitely go check her out if you haven't. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about is Community Corner. So I'm not gonna go in depth here because Samantha and I have decided to change up what we're doing a little bit. So what, you know, the 10th of every month, we were filming a video for our hashtag Year of the Dragon cell. And um, we do enjoy doing that and we love celebrating people's progress. Um, but we also, the last few times, have gone off on tangents and chit-chatting about what's happening in community. And the feedback from that has been really good and a lot of people have really enjoyed that. So we're kind of switching over where, you know, every month we're gonna do a video together where we talk about what's happening in community. And, you know, we might show some of our stitching and stuff like that too. And we will have a segment for our Year of the Dragon um, stitch along in there as well. 
but our first one if you want to check it out is posted to Samantha's channel this month so I will link it here for you um, we talked about Lindy Stitch's Midsummer Stitch which is coming up on July the 19th and 20th Samantha and I are both attending that and we're very excited to do this um, we also talked about uh, Red Panda Homebody and how she has set up Floss Tube Library on Instagram for us which is an amazing resource we talked about Christmas in July, um, which is something that I'm hosting under um, a new name on Instagram, which is a Stitcher's 12 Days of Christmas. Um, and then the hashtag is a Stitcher's 12 Days of Christmas as well. And the whole idea behind this is that um, it, I'm just releasing some prompts every second day for the month of July, where you're able to share, you know, your favorite version of, you know, a Santa Claus stitch and your favorite version of a tree cross stitch for Christmas and your favorite reindeer and your favorite whatever um, and the idea is just kind of trying to promote some not even well I guess promote too but just creating an awareness and seeing some of the really cool patterns that are out there that are not the brand new releases um, and if that's what you choose to share that's totally fine too um, but I think it's really neat to see some of the stuff that people you know in their mind have thought oh I wanted to stitch the Santa for a really long time and they've you know they've shared this one and and I've seen some patterns that have come up from this that I've never seen before so I think that's really cool um, so if you want to follow along go to Instagram um, check out it the handle is a stitches 12 days of Christmas um, and then this fall we're gonna use the same thing and we'll be doing like a free virtual advent and it's just the idea is a community builder so um, definitely go check that out if that's something you're interested in and then lastly, um, we did a Stitchers meetup in Abbotsford here, and it was awesome. We had a few Stitchers show up to our local quilting store. We had a great time, and we'll definitely arrange to do another one um, probably before... Um, well within the first week of August for sure before I head out on our summer vacation uh, and then also going to the States next week for a Stitch Up uh, meet teachers meet up in the Seattle area. Um, something I thought was really cool was that uh, Thread Gremlins, they had shared a post, I think it was Red Panda, had said, she made a reference to Mr. Rogers and, you know, his neighborhood and how everybody here were kind of all like stitchy neighbors is what we should be calling each other. And I thought, I like that. That's awesome. So that's a term I think I'm going to start using for sure. So thank you so much for that. Um, but yeah, I think it was, it's very fitting, right? Because we're so, uh, even though this is largely, a, you know, a, like a virtual community, um, everyone is so closely connected to though at the same time, you know, and you do feel like you have a close relationship with neighbors. So Anyways, on that note, um, I'm going to sign off for today and I will see you again probably the first week of August before I leave. I'll try and make another video. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Bye!